So hey friends, welcome to this week's video. I'm in Seattle, super early, because I'm still working on East Coast time <laughs> to make my clients happy. But this week we're gonna go over the Pixel Buds Pro. And there's a bunch of stuff I need to check because it's been a while since I've done a review. Thanks Christmas music. But anyway, I'm gonna cut away to some specifications while I set up for work and make sure I'm not late for my first call even though I extremely want to be. First block of meetings are done. Things I did notice is that I'm running on ANC right now and I can definitely still hear the music that's being blasted. Like all this Christmas music. It's still pretty here, relatively solid. However, if you're playing music, you really don't hear it. However, if you're just talking like on a phone call or just listening without music, you definitely will hear some of that come in. So like in a cafe setting, I could imagine if you're listening to like a podcast or like an audiobook, you might be able to still hear everything around you from like a music perspective in terms of external stuff. However, we'll do some more testing and see how they perform like outdoors and things. But let's continue with the meetings because I have a million before the holidays. So I'm an idiot and I left my laptop upstairs. However, luckily these first calls are mostly just screen share, so I'll use my phone. I've been talking for about an hour, so it's 6.40. I started calls at six. Um, so let's see how long this lasts until I have to actually go upstairs and get my laptop. But also let's see how long this charge lasts. All right, so it's 11 o'clock and they finally died. So I think I started my day at five using them. So I got about six hours, not too bad. Keep in mind that the battery or the level of volume that I was using is pretty much like 80, 90% on calls because you know people's volumes of their headsets are different. So it was a little bit higher than the projected 50 or 60% that you're supposed to be that Google used for their you know, seven or eight hour estimation. But I'm gonna go to my room and So let's talk about the work situation that we have here. So right now you're listening to the microphones and you guys can tell me what you hear. However, from my client's perspective, this is a really clear microphone overall. Obviously there's some better microphones that I've used like standalone microphones or headsets that will perform better. But from a true wireless perspective, this is pretty commendable. It is very clear. They never misheard me. They didn't have volume issues with it. It was just very consistent and they liked the sound overall. Some did say that there's a robotic tinge to it, which I think is a lot of headphones out there. However, it's not egregious like some other things, like the Samsungs were a little bit more robotic than this. this. So I overall like the presentation of this. The other thing I really like is that it was able to dull out the external noises. So obviously I had all this Christmas music blasting around me and my clients really couldn't hear it. The only time that they could hear that music coming through is when I was quiet or I was trying to think about my next idea and no one else was talking on the call. However, if I was speaking or you know there was a conversation going between a few of us, there wasn't all that distraction from the Christmas music blaring through the speaker. So I think that was really nice that they're able to isolate a little bit better and you're not gonna get all this distraction around. So very, very nice from that perspective. Obviously I was been on that call for like six, seven hours. These guys performed very well from a comfort perspective. They don't have uh, foam tips, they're just silicon, but I didn't really need a finick with these at all. They are lightweight, they fit nicely in ear and super, super comfortable. I did not have any issues with them. However, you know, I kind of like having hooks with True Wireless just because it feels a little bit more secure. These never felt like they're gonna fall out, but I do have some concerns when we do try this like on a more active setting. So 
that's a good transition into let's try this more actively and see how this performs. Again, in the comments, tell me how you guys think about this microphone, but let's, well, first I gotta eat this food. Then we'll go to the gym and try these out. As we get into the workouts, these worked really well for lifting. I did not have any issues with these moving around. They felt pretty close to ear. They were very lightweight. So for an hour, two hours of lifting, you probably won't feel anything because they're not very far off your head, so you shouldn't feel any sway or any movement. However, not everything is sunshine and rainbows, and that's where I started seeing the degradation once we start moving to more cardio-focused workouts. Slow runs, walking, all that sort of stuff, you're fine. You're not gonna really have any issues. It's when you start picking up the pace, that's when you start feeling that stethoscope effect and like those headphones are not perfectly secure in your ear. Again, this is when I wish they had a wing just to keep that really secure and snug in your ear and the earbud doesn't have to move around a lot and it just has a lot of structure to keep it in place. But since they are wingless, they do seem to be moving around a lot more when you're heavier stepping, changing direction, jumping around. And at the end of my jump working workout and I built up a lot of sweat, that's when they finally did fall out. So in terms of an overall recommendations, again, lifts, it's more static workouts, slower things like yoga, you'll be fine. However, once you start changing directions, jumping around and start going through more fast paced activities, that's when you really feel that these are not secure. And so for my recommendation, I can't recommend it for those people who are going to run and do more of those agility type drills. During this workout, as well as many different parts in this trip, I watched video content to make sure that the audio lag wasn't a problem. Reading through forums, a lot of people had issues with their Pixel Buds Pro right out of the gate, as well as all the way up to November 2022. So I wanted to make sure that this wasn't a problem for me and watching a bunch of different YouTube videos, watching Crunchyroll, watching a bunch of different streaming services, I did not really have any issues with audio lag. Everything seemed synced up quite well. Looking at the stats, it rates at 137 milliseconds. I believe this is a little bit more than what the AirPods Pro 2 have at 127, but overall in averages, you're usually looking at like 200 to 50 milliseconds on most true wireless. So this is actually really good and you shouldn't have an issue. Hopefully if you're on the latest firmware, you shouldn't have these problems, but let me know if you guys are having issues with your Pixel Buds Pro with this. It's just not something that I've seen. Okay, so watching that video, I kind of realized that there's been updates since this review, so. Let's talk about that. So obviously there's been some updates since MKBHD did that review, and I wanna talk about some things that still apply and some things that don't apply. Starting off with the things that don't apply are, is that battery life. As he mentioned, he still had issues with volume, but he found it very pleasant on the upper end where it wasn't overbearing. However, as a result of that lower volume, I don't get that seven hour mark with ANC on that he got. I was much under that on phone calls, and with music, I also felt that because of the fact that it was not serviceable under 50%. It wasn't serviceable at 60%. You just need to be at higher volumes and as a result, it's just gonna die faster than projections. So I don't know how he got that, but it's not working on my unit. The other things that he was mentioning are the controls. In terms of the controls, he was having a lot of issues. I think they've done a really good job about fixing that, especially because I've been using this in rain, I've been using this in a bunch of different areas, I've been using this on planes, like everywhere, and I don't really have issues with how small they are. The only thing that's weird is that the, the up and down is just a little bit counterintuitive because it's kind of a reverse pull. So to go volume up, I have to actually swipe down, and to go volume down, I actually swipe up. So it's a little bit counterintuitive there, but in terms of reliability and mispresses, I'm not really having an issue there. It's just a lot of the time I get the action that I want. So I think they've improved on the firmware there. Um, the big thing that I saw that he missed out on was the actual uh, sound. So he did not have an EQ and that was something that he was hoping that he could get from it. And they have included that. So going into the app, you can see that they have a sound section and that's where not only do you see the uh, noise cancellation and stuff like that, but you see an equalization. So pretty basic of like heavy bass, light bass, balance, but they've also include did the settings menu, which you can actually customize your own. So moving these sliders around will give you a custom EQ. Obviously you don't have the curves. There's no visualization to help you kind of really tune that in. However, people ask for an EQ and they delivered in the firmware. So awesome that they did that. So there's definitely been some improvements. The main thing that I noticed from his review that stays consistent is the power of the ANC and the transparency. ANC is B tier, it is serviceable, it does pretty well on a flight. However, with a lot of loud noises coming through, you still will hear that 
like high pitched noises or even higher pitched like white noise come through. So it's not perfect in that sense because it's just missing some stuff that would make it better. Unfortunately, there's not a way to resolve that even with their features of like a better seal. It's just that's how powerful the ANC is. Maybe they can make it better in firmware, but right now over many months of use, I haven't seen any updates that have improved that. And then in terms of the transparency mode, it does a pretty good job as well, but it's not as natural sounding. It's not as powerful as some other competitors out there like Apple and Neura and you know some of the, the bigger players out there. It's not well, not bigger players, but just all their players out there, it's not punching as clear and as loud as them. And that's something that I think that they can definitely improve. Microphones in general could be better. Um, so I think if they improve their microphones on a future version, they'll have better ANC as well as they'd have better just phone calls in general. But while we're on ANC and we're, we're on transparency mode, let's go into some samples so you guys can hear that for yourself. So let's focus in on the music a little bit. With these Pixel Buds Pros, they are extremely well balanced. I don't think I heard a song out there that was too overblown or vocals were not heard or instruments were too harsh. It just does a really good job about being pretty solid across in all the genres that you have to throw at it. While that is an advantage, it also is a disadvantage in a sense because songs or singers with more characteristics in them that are distinct may not shine or may not hit as hard as you'd want them to and that stock tuning just can get you there. That's where the levelness kind of works because they did introduce that EQ. So like before the EQ, I could see how a lot of people didn't like the sound signature, but now that we can EQ it, you have the ability to introduce a little bit more sparkle or a little bit more bass. And because it's so sort of in the middle and, and balanced, you can really bring in the bass without worrying about it getting too muddy or getting too harsh on the upper ends for horns. So I do like that flexibility. Some of the, even the, the stock tuning, uh, sorry, stock presets work really well here. So an example that I have is PJ Morton's Say So works extremely well out of the box. It's a vocal centric song with very light instrumentals and it just sparkles really nicely as a result. However, if we go to something like Paramore or Panic of the Disco or something that's J-Rock, you'll notice that those vocals just don't have the crispness. They don't have the sparkle. They don't have the distinctness in their voices. And you're just like, something's missing there. It's like they're muffled. Like, especially with like Clyde Lawrence, I listened to one of his songs and I was like, man, he doesn't sound as powerful as he normally does. However, you can use the preset of vocal boost. And that's what I use for a lot of those kind of rock songs because it just makes it, it brings it out. It brings out that extra punch that you want in those vocals that make it so good. Then on the other side, when I'm listening to like Afrobeats, R&B and hip hop, there's some low end. You know, I, I listen to some John Legend songs. I listen to some Burna Boy songs and they're just missing some of that thump. They're missing some of that vibe from the low end that really makes that song what it is. So then I just do in bass boost. 
So like the pretty easy presets to use for them. Obviously, if you're shuffling around, it's kind of be annoying to figure out. So you might want to use the more customization on the EQs to really balance out where you want the sparkle and where you want the bass. However, if you're, you know, like me, where you listen to like genres and segments, then just clicking one of the presets or creating your own generally works pretty well. But let me show you guys what this sounds stock. Hopefully this gives you insights of where you probably would want to tweak the these room? when you're listening. But uh, let's go to those. Well, stick around. We're just warming up, baby. So obviously Google has done a lot better job with the pros than they did with the A series. If you don't remember that, I freaking hated the A series for a lot of different reasons. You can check that really quick duet I did above, <laughs> but these are much better. It's connectivity, sound, reliability, those are all there. And that's the reason why I will be recommending these. Obviously there are some downsides to this. Like I wish they kept the wing from the A series. So like they may not be perfect for all people working out. Um, some of the sound signature stuff isn't there out of the box, but thankfully they've introduced things like the EQ and the presets that will actually allow us to get the sound that we'd like. So while it might be a falter, they've compensated that in firmware, which makes me very confident that they'll continually improve these. Again, like things like ANC and transparency are serviceable. They're very strong, but they're not top tier, but maybe they'll improve them over time with firmware. Time will only tell. But right now these run for about 190 bucks. However, I've seen them on sale for like 170, 160. So if you can get these on sale, even better. But I think these perform a lot better than other headphones in this price category. So if you're looking for something that's very Android focused and relatively cheap compared to the market, then these are a great option for you. If you have any questions or you would like to purchase that, check in the comments or sorry, check in the description but leave me comments and ask any questions that you might have if you're still looking at these guys as always please consider liking subscribing commenting doing all things that you normally do on a video that you like and love and to my ogs thank you for giving me ideas for content it helps me drive the things on my channel as well as making sure that people get to see what they want and get some assistance on what they're trying to purchase love doing that as you know but as always i appreciate you see you soon hopefully if work lets me but yeah, see you soon.